is uh, some kind of uh, victory for Adoke Bello and the other parties involved Agreed. in OPL 245. All right. Well, thank you so much, Adefemi. Glad that we could review papers I today. <laughs> All right. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll have Bosin Omofaye to give us updates on global business activities. Stay with us. Three decades ago, a new era was born. The creation of the Nigerian Economic Summit in 1993 set up the trajectory for the growth of the Nigerian economy. The summit held annually by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, NESG, has been a catalyst igniting positive change, creating opportunities and facilitating partnerships. As we celebrate 30 years of impact, join us at the 30th Nigerian Economic Summit with the theme Collaborative Action for Growth, Stability and Competitiveness. Date 14th to 16th October 2024. Venue Transcorp Hilton Hotel, Abuja. Register now at www.nesgroup.org forward slash 30. Follow us at official NESG to learn more. Be a part of this monumental opportunity to drive and celebrate Nigeria's journey to greatness. NES 30, celebrating 30 years of progress in the national interest. In an effort to reshape the narrative among global impact makers, the Olu of Wari, that's Ogiame Atuwashe III, and his wife, Olori Atuwashe III, are spearheading the Elevate Africa initiative. This platform aims to highlight Africa's potential and empower African voices in discussions about their development. The event will feature notable speakers, including Dr. Walton Ekundayo, Gilpin, CEO of Rockwell Commercial Bank, who will address financial empowerment in Africa, and Honorable Umaru Napoleon Karuma, Sierra Leone's Deputy Minister for Mines and Mineral Resources, who will discuss sustainable mining practices. Kim Schofield, a member of the Georgia House of Representatives, will explore the intersection of policy and leadership, emphasizing the global influence of Africa diaspora leaders. Well, Tochuku McFoy of Elevate Africa now joins us to discuss the launch of Elevate Africa by Oluri Atuwashi III and the Olu of Wari. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us here on Newsday. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Honored to be here. Great. Of course, we're aware that His Majesty Ogiame Atuwashi III and the Olu of Wari and Her Majesty Oluri Atuwashi III, Queen Consort of Wari Kingdom, are the founders of Elevate Africa. What's Elevate Africa and the inspiration behind it? The inspiration behind Elevate Africa is the fact that we know that politics, people, policies, can not only drive change, we need collaboration, we need the African continent to unite, we need to change the way Africa sees itself and the way the world sees Africa. And the platform of the Olu of Wari and um, his wife, the Oluri, is the, is the best platform for this. So it is not a conference, it is a movement, it's a call to action, and it is the beginning of something for the youth and for Africa in general. 
Fantastic, very well said. Now, we also understand that it has three cardinal pillars, uh, the convening, the power room, and fellowship. Yes. Could you take us through these so that our viewers can make sense of them? Also, oh, I think it's, 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 the, it's the convening, it's the fellowship, and it's stories. In the convening, we have power rooms. So the convening is a small group of, of thought leaders, but not like not conference style. We want to come together in the convening tomorrow um, on the 10th and on the 11th and just and talk about innovation, talk about governance, leadership, grassroots leadership, talk about finance, talk about trade, um, intra-trade ideas, talk about stories. So that's the convening. The convening has the power rooms and the power rooms are like where we would, we would have papers written and next steps. The fellowship is the, is the follow-up of the convening. We don't just want to have a meeting. No, we want people to post the convening, learn, grow, drive, push, birth. And the stories, which I'm, I'm, I'm a key part of, is we've learned that stories reshape, define who we are. And Africa has to tell her own stories. And, 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 and these stories will all come from the convening and from the fellowship. So it's a connected three, the convening, the fellowship, and stories. Great, convening, fellowship, and stories, well noted. Now, of course, we understand that this is a massive project and one of its kind to happen on the continent. And it's quite commendable that you are thinking about on the pan-African basis and also on a global scale. So why not elevate Nigeria as opposed to elevate Africa? Um, because Nigeria is a chapter of the book in Africa, maybe the first chapter, maybe the most important chapter, but it's just a chapter of the book. And when we connect Africa, when we highlight Africa, it begins to make a beautiful story. We need more than ever to drive. Yes, Africa is an important, Nigeria is an important chapter of the book. But the book now needs to come together. The book now needs to form a beautiful tapestry of stories that connect us. So it is very key that, and, and the Olori, who is the visionary, will always say, when Africa unites, Africa rises. When we can see ourselves as a people, as one people, then we bring all our strengths together to drive this narrative. So yes, it's, um, Nigeria is a key part of the book, but just a chapter of the book. Fantastic. Of course, as Pan-Africanists here, we, we, we absolutely love that. Now, let's get into the event. Can you tell us a little bit more about the speakers, the panels, and some of the sessions that will be held uh, throughout the event? So, so we have speakers from all parts of, um, of industries. We have speakers from the finance industry. We have speakers from, from entertainment, we have speakers from politics, governance policies, we have, we have a lot from the social SDG, SDGs, we have a lot of, of them from there. Um, we have Team Hansted, we have the, the former president of Kosovo, the first female president of Kosovo, we have the former president of Mauritius, we have a lot of them and I'm careful not to, to say the names so that I don't need to um, I, I, um, make sure everybody's name is called, but we, we also have notably David Doe, who's going to speak tomorrow about his African story. Um, and the reason why David is a key part of this conversation is because we've seen how his, 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 the Afrobeat sound has driven a different perspective in Africa. We have Tenny who, who Africa, has, Africa has done her and she's, and she's done Africa. So we, we've, we have a beautiful mix. We, we also have poetry from, from Al-Hal Islam, um, and, and it's full. So we have phenomenal panelists across trade investment, across politics, governance, leadership, collaborations, community-led leadership, just, and then we have storytelling. So it's a, it's a beautiful, a beautiful um, array of speakers and thought leaders. 
Great. Let's talk more about collaborations and implementations. One of the challenges of African leaders is that they don't collaborate very well and, as, and also fail to do really well when it comes to implementation. So how do their majesties and Elevate Africa intend to tackle these so that you drive actions in engineering solutions as opposed to just you know, talking and ending things there? One of the major anchors of this is the fact that the Royal Majesty and the Oluri of Wari and, um, and the Ogyame himself, it's a long-term thing. It's a monarch. It's a long-term vision. They understand that it would take time for, for trauma to end, for Africa's trauma. It would take time for us to um, um, come together. So one, one, long, one of our focus is the long play. It's we're here for a long time. We're here for a long time, that's number one. Number two, it's about leadership, it's about starting. It's about bringing the Ghanaian people in, South African people in, Nigerians in. It's about bringing, it's about starting, leading, making sure that we start it, we show our hand. It's not a conference, it's a call to action, and we're starting it, and that's the play. Uh, fantastic. And I love that you're saying that it's not a conference, it's a call to action. And, you know, there's so many other initiatives, of course, uh, to address some of the social challenges, particularly in the Wari Kingdom, uh, which was established as well by some of which, excuse me, have been established as well by their majesties. Now, one of those is the Royal Iweria Foundation, uh, which organizes teachers' masterclasses, free medical and ru at rural community robotics and coding classes uh, for the kids in Riverine communities. Uh, and now, of course, Elevate Africa. So what are your driving forces that you would like to propel the Africa of our dreams? So it's one coin, different sides. You must first impact uh, your community. And the Oluri and the Ogyami have done a phenomenal job. From education to healthcare, phenomenal job. First for the community. And with that template, with that drive, with the, with the drive, the team, the, the policies, the, the blueprints, we want to expand. But we also want to learn from, from other countries, learn, with, learn from how Ghana is fixing finance, learn from, from Rwanda how they are, they, are, they are driving innovation, learn from, from, from South Africa. Maybe I'm a piano, I'm joking, but the idea is this. We have our own work done, but we want to expand our minds and share ideas. So yes, the Royal Iwi Foundation has done so much in the past three years, and this is one of the motivation for Elevate Africa. Great, now can you tell us more about the rationale behind the theme of this event? That's the Africa we see. Oh well, yeah, it is first, it is first, um, it's a mirror and then a declaration, and, and, and I'll explain. It's a mirror because I've learned that how you see yourself is everything. So it, it is first a mirror to see this is the Africa we see, but it's also a declaration to say this is the Africa we will see. So it, it is both about the present, but it's about molding the future. And, and that is what we need to do. We need visionaries, we need vision. Young people need to see. The, the Africa we see right now has a lot of contradictions, has a lot of um, loopholes, dark, dark spots, but we want to paint pictures. We want to show from our past. Oh, we had amazing times. We had great leaders. We had, we had a one Africa. We had Africa that, that had beautiful inter-trade ideas, but also show the future. Not, not only be critical and, and, and be negative, want to paint a beautiful picture. Absolutely. That is, that is possible. Fantastically yeah. said. Uh, of course, in the spread of optimism, we wish you all the best uh, with your event. That's uh, Tuchuku McFoy, head of media for Elevate Thank Africa. Thank you. <laughs>